Welcome back to beautiful Guangzhou and the Guangzhou Gymnasium as we get ready for game two of Misfits versus SK Te Telecom T1. Game one, pretty quick. I'm sure Misfits didn't have much to think about, but game two, and that's where their eyes are focused. Yeah, exactly. Misfits need to be able to completely reset, forget that first game, make a few changes in the pick and ban phase. Really want to see them get rid of Galio and Jace. Now they are on blue side. A lot of people are with you there. Of course, you got to ban another 20 champions if you want to get rid of all the best ones, but at least target the very important ones, which is now Galio and Jace. Well, and I think it's just target the ones that can make SKT have an easy early game, right? That can shut down your aggression. If this is the way in, then you can't have losing la lanes. You can't have Galio who can shut down your plays all across the map. And Huni just had such a strong early game in combination with Faker and the roams that he had. Uh, it really snowballed this game. For exactly. Us. They played around him so well in the early game. It allowed Huni to spend 51% of his time in laning phase across the river, in the face of Afari, near Afari's tower. That is a crazy number. It's actually also funny enough who needs average during the group stages, yeah. because every single game, he's in the face of the enemy, but normally he doesn't get ganks. He just sits alone. This time he got ganks. And to put that in context, the tournament average is about 30%. Yes. So he's massively above. He spends almost twice as much time as, as your average player at Worlds does across that middle line so of there being you go. aggressive. And you can really mess with Huni if you just keep him on his side of the map. <laughs> you just get right. That's the key. Side. That's yeah. the key. If you can just actually kill him and shut him down, if there's no <laughs> Galio who can maybe stop you from doing it, let's see Misfits adaptations coming into this game because a lot needs to change. Not necessarily purely in the pick and ban phase, but also in the game itself. We yep. saw a lot of individual mistakes, some nerves, honestly, from the players. Starting off with the bans first, and there he is. Number two on the ban list for Misfits Gaming is Galio. We'll have to see. Another one I'm looking at is if that Oriana gets through for either of these mid laners as we continue with ban phase one. And I just want to see the Jace as well, if that gets banned or not. Yes, there we go. So Misfits agree with the caster desk, get rid of Galio Jace here. And one of the reasons the Jace is also annoying is it is still a flex pick. And the last pick a man phase, as you guys can see on the screen here down at the bottom, we had Trundle, we had Galio, those were flex picks. They didn't know where they were going. The Jace came in as a surprise in the end. Could have still gone to top lane, or sorry, to mid lane if needed, but then got swapped up top. So it was very difficult for Misfits to do anything in that draft. Also excited to see if Furkan is going to go over Misfits, and obviously it is not. So, you know, will SK Telecom actually pick this up for Wolf? It has been such a strong pick for him. Uh, very clearly, that was a concern for Misfits going into game number one. And if we do get the Rakan, I want to see Thresh come in from Ignar's side. Try and shut down Rakan in the laning phase. Now, SKT might think the same and therefore hesitate to pick it over for Wolf and just go a lot safer, which is what they're doing. Tarek locked in already as well. The Jarvan being a bit of a flex for them if they really want to throw it around. Huni has a few plays on that himself. Max Lauren, Power of Evil now locking in with the boss of the in the top lane, but that bot lane, really necessary. Yeah, give me Rakan here for, for Ignar. Like, it's a playmaking support. You build Arden Sensor. I actually like it against Tarek as well because your engage is so quick. It's hard for Tarek to time his ulti. Ignar instead, though, going for just pure lane bully. So we are assuming this is going to be Ignar, but right. there is the possibility. So there have been you know, talks of Karma top, of Karma mid, which did kind of get pushed out of the meta very, you know, very quickly by split pushers. As you know, even if you win early, it's very hard to do anything late if you can't group on Karma. But you know, maybe Misfits is willing to kind of throw a wrench in the gears and try something like that. The possibility. If they do put it down the bot lane, it's just a very strong pushing lane. So again, would also give them advantage in 2v2, which is what they're looking for. Keep highlighting the fact that Misfits need to win the early game. And that's a hover. Caitlyn <laughs> is still available, and they can just go right back to that. Caitlyn was very successful for them in the first game, but they are instead going to lock in Shogath. And Shogath, another pick, which really has been so effective here at Worlds. Yeah, now they're able to ban away Trundle, take that away from Alfari. It's been one of his answers to Cho'Gath. Shen has been another popular pick for a lot of teams when they face the Cho'Gath, because then they can just use the Shen to TP away from the lane and snowball the other side of the map while Cho'Gath is scaling. It's pretty interesting what SKT is doing here. Now Misfits has to say we either go back at Bang or we go at Faker now. And they have to decide Faker or Bang gets one of the champions at this point. And to me, when you are already drafting Karma and you're assuming this is going bot lane with Tristana, you're already pushing, I think you should be targeting the AD carries, trying to get some sort of an advantage down on the bot side. And Sivir traditionally is used as an answer to Tristana. So this is interesting yeah. as an adaptation, not something we've really seen picked or banned hardly at all at Worlds. And SKT actually leave Trundle open. It's a 
great pick for Fari up yeah. in top lane. We'll give another good lane for Misfits to play around or even leave to just play 1v1 and then let the Trundle just out tail in the split push game. I'm also looking at Twitch just because I think Bang's Twitch is so amazing in the late game. It's so difficult to play against. But this tells me that Misfits want Bang to pick a late game scaling champion. A champion that cannot win in the early game and then Misfits can try and bully the 2v2 lane. And I think that makes a lot of sense, right? Why worry about the late game of, exactly. of SKT? They're going to have an incredible late game. Yep. Whatever they pick, this team just plays so well around the map. They're so well coordinated. The best way for Misfits to win is going to be aggressive, to really get in their face, snowball these advantages. And you know, against this Terra Kogma, I think there will be opportunities for Misfits to do just that. 100%, especially if they have the Karma in the bot lane to just permit push to the tower, use Tristana's ability to kill towers early to try and snowball the game here. Now, we still got to wait and see if Karma will go mid or down to support. How Beeble is the kind of person who's played Lulu and Karma in the past. It's a, a counter pick now top for Alfari, and he goes with Nar and not the Trunkle. So why I think this makes sense, it, you know, in perhaps a matchup that we would have is more even, I think Trundle makes a lot of sense, but it wins the game generally more slowly. It's through split push, it's through map play, it's through you know, controlling your opponents and playing a more slow style game. Whereas the Nar, I think, can have advantages over the Cho'Gath in the early stages and then can be a playmaker. You can TP down, you can get these big Mega Nar ults that could perhaps turn around a game. And I think that's what they're looking for. And it is going to be the Karma mid, as I had called out earlier. So we have the Blitzcrank being locked in now. The Nar just before that. Everything for Misfits says go forward. They take out the Sivir for lane control. They also take out the Sivir so they just don't get their fights run away from. And SKT can exit and be safe. This could be an awesome game for Misfits. But again, they have to act early as SKT finalized their last pick. Yeah, and we do have to remember Faker. You know, he has his pick of the litter. He has the yep. counter pick here, knowing that it is the Karma. They leave him for last, and he selects the Corky. So we're going to have to find out how can Power of Evil hold up in this matchup when there is Jarvan, when there is you know this early ganking threat. And if he gets behind, Karma can sometimes really, really struggle, but does have good early game power. Definitely very strong in the laning phase, and Corky's not that scary of a laner. He's much more focused on get Trinity Force, then start making plays, and of course scaling. So SKT have gone back to a draft we would see in the group stages, where it's a lot of scaling down the bot lane, in the mid lane as well, even in top lane for Huni in this game here. They don't really have any lanes where you're saying, wow, they have to win through this one right. lane in the early game. It's actually just play very safe, calculated, get your defensive vision. Everything is just screaming aggression from Misfits. Multiple lanes that can actually go aggressive and try and shut down SKT. And I just think it's so smart because you know that SKT is going to have this almighty late game. They're going to be so <laughs> powerful. Go for a little early game. Be super aggressive. And I think we're going to have to see in a fantastic game from Maxlor, despite the fact that you have you know, this Blitzcrank. I do think you still need the jungler to be proactive. Yeah. You need Maxlor getting involved. And that could be tough in the Jarvan versus Sejuani matchup. SKT putting their foot down in game one. Misfits now realizing this is the real deal. Second quarter final matchup of SK Telecom T1 and Misfits Gaming heading into game two right now. And we are about to be on to the rift. A reminder that all throughout the knockout stage, Penta kills, Baron steals. Activate the mystery gifting bonus. Increase your likelihood of rolling a legendary or esports skin. Penta kills and Baron steals. We'll see if any of those happen within the game. We do have that Kogma. We do have two junglers that are very back and forth with getting those steals or a team that'll give them up when ahead. So the chances, I feel like, quite high. I really also want to see Alfari on the Gnar here because I typically don't think Gnar is that great against Tarek. It's very easy to see the Gnar engage when he's kind of jumping towards you and you time the Tarek ulti with when, when Mega Gnar hits. It also doesn't synergize that well with Sejuani because he's a ranged champion, at least in, in mini Gnar. So there is definitely some questions regarding that one, but also it comes down to comfort for Alfari. If he knows, yep. okay, he can actually get ahead in this lane phase, use this mid-game then to TP in with his Gnar, and then have the big Neg Mega Gnar ultis on multiple members, well, that is a way then to actually get kills for Misfits. Seeing the call in the mid lane start for Faker. He says we're going to go ahead and hang back. Do what we can to farm. Faker as well, another champion that can get those side lane roams if he wants. Get the package on and he can be there in an instant. Peanut towards the top side is actually just a line of scrimmage here before teams even dip into each other's jungles to feed. See what's going on. A little bit of vision down towards the bot side as Faker can stay safe 
watching Ignar in the brush. And we did see Ignar actually against TSM, I believe, level one, go in, force the flash out of Bjergsen. So was looking to see if there was any opportunities for that play, but perhaps because of the research that SKT has done, they know to play very defensive. Four-man line of scrimmage around the blue buff. No chance of Ignar actually getting in there and stealing away the blue or forcing an early summoner. I think that just speaks so much to their preparation. It's important to highlight that it's now the second time we see this glitch prank from Ignar here. The last time when they played it, all eyes on the bottom lane. We had jungle ganks, we had mid lane roams, they were playing around Ignar's Blitzcrank here, trying to force aggressive plays to see if you can get ahead early, because again, you're not going to build this typical art sensor on your Blitzcrank, that's actually moved over to your mid laner, the Karma, but it will of course affect Karma's scaling going into the late game. She's not going to be that strong, at least not compared to a Corky, so it's very much get ahead early game for Misfits, snowball the game, and win before you go full late game. And while the Karma herself won't be that strong, when you do have a mid lane Karma, if you can have that Ardent sensor in the death gap, as they're jumping in, it's good actually. Dazzle be. goes down, Wolf takes a hit, that's gonna be an explosion down below 100 HP, but he's saved, and that's gonna be the heal and flash for Wolf. Ansama might have wanted to commit to that. I mean, one more auto, he actually get that proc on the explosive shot, may have been the kill there, but he does hang on to both his summoners, and they have force. Both of them out of wolf. They have so much pressure in the lane here. Blitzcrank just applies this non-stop pressure towards you whenever he moves past the minion wave. You know there's a chance he hooks you in. There could be a jungler there, or you take a bad trade because the enemy to carry is ready. Let's see here. We get that first gank in the bot lane. Oh, they have the war down. TP coming in, and that is going to be big pressure. They get on to bang. Now both of his are blown, and they are going to have to back up towards the side. It's going to be Maxlor going very low. He takes the tank first. First blood going over to bang. He's still alive, but goes down to the explosive shot. The Cathian surprise won't do much damage, and Misfits make it out. The last bang. Yeah, wow. Misfits trying to make a very aggressive play, but it goes so wrong for them. And SKT able to handle this. They took way too much damage on the initial play. Going in, Ignar's already pushed out, and Maxor goes down so fast. And not only does SKT get first blood, they get two kills. They're both on the Kogma. And that's going to be rough. Yeah, Misfits actually want to kill Wolf here. There is no summoners on this Tarek. He's level two. He's very easy to burst down and then step away. But they get onto Bang with Barrier and Flash. And just, it's it's way too early. I mean, Power of Evil was TPing in. He hadn't even arrived yet. They don't have the damage coordinated. The damage is not going down at the same time. And you need to be so pristine on these early game tower dives. Because when you're level two, level three, uh, one or two turret shots can completely destroy you. Exactly, yeah. So the coordination not on point for Misfits. And this was the comp that needed to get ahead early. Yep. Down 500 gold now, two kills over to Bang, as you highlighted just before. Here's still big CS difference. And there is still pressure for Misfits in the lane because Bang has no summoners. He will die very quickly if he gets hooked in. And they need to continue that pressure now. That's the only way that you can really you know, kind of get this back. Because they did get a kill over on Hansama. He has a decent buy, and if they can continually make plays down here, and there's this couple minute window where Bang is not gonna have that flash, and you really can try to pick on him, but I feel like if you can't exploit him during these couple minutes, then it's gonna be very hard to do so later. But it's one of those tough mistakes to make in this early yep. game, because you were trying to reset after the last game where everything went wrong. You're trying to mentally get ready for this one. Actually get some momentum going for your team, and then the first play you make, it wasn't even necessarily an outplay from SKT. Bang just clicked barrier, then flash, and stood still and just shot at everyone right in front of him. They're like dying and just over diving. Peanut having eyes on Max Lore. We see Ignar throw out the hook there, knowing the junglers wouldn't be present on the bot Peanut side. Flag and drag over the dragon pit was missed, but Max Lore is just out of mana. He's gonna need the team to help him out on this one. Faker just getting back to lane, so he won't be there. And just as Peanut can get back over the wall, he does so. Flash blown. Yeah, smart that Peanut flashes behind that dragon as fast as possible so Ignar doesn't actually get him with the hook and pulls him right back in. So Peanut did stay alive, but again, lost that summoner spell. Maxlaw, level 4 on this Sejuani, needs to go back and get full mana before he can do anything, but he needs to get right back out on the map. They have to make another play. Yeah, they certainly do, because, I mean, so far in the top side, it's actually Huni that's getting the better of Elfari, but Elfari, Pant level 6, Meganar will be the solo. Misses the wallop, also misses the Q, and Huni's gonna be able to walk out of this one. Afari not really feeling it, not understanding what other pressure was gonna be coming in. Also, good use of the minions there from Huni's side to step behind the minions so Afari could not throw the house in his face. 
And you have to respect the fact that if you go up in melee range as that Gnar into the Cho'Gath, with the cannon minion hitting you, with the feast available, the damage can get turned around so, so quickly back on you. Pushing in is Han Sama. They still have a bit of control over this lane. And by that, 52 to 30 in CS. We have to realize what Bang has in kills, though. Kind of makes up for that for now. We'll have to see if they can fight back. Feeling good to go for a dazzle. They just miss and give Bang some time to farm under turret. This is almost more important than kills for Misfits. The fact they keep getting damage on the bot lane tower. Because yep. once you take down the first tower, again, you open up the map. Blitz rank can start roaming more aggressively. Much easier to start getting deep vision in the enemy jungle. And that's where, out of nowhere, Ignar can show up in mid and suddenly create a pick for his team. So you got to get down these outer turrets so quickly. and. And Sama's number one goal is just keep getting damage on this tower. When he goes to buy Glacial Shroud, sold. And now he picks up Ninja Tabi's, uh, I should say resell, uh, Ninja Tabi's Dark Steel and his refillable potion. So he decides to go for those boots first as he heads back to lane with Teleport. I think it's pretty smart. It's a more defensive option. And when you're a team that already has such incredible scaling, such incredible late game, you don't need to kind of hedge your bets and, and try to get a little bit stronger of an early game thing. Right. Just survive lane, scale up, make sure that Misfits can't get an enormous lead, and SKT will be in an incredible position if they are not down in gold. Heading in, he might get a chomp down if he gets the chance. Blows off Ari's flash in a 1v1 situation. Coming back to lane a bit stronger. Now the hook. The hook onto Wolf. Gonna throw down the Ignite immediately. Means they want it. Dazzle comes back out. Forces Han Sama's flash. It's almost like they aren't considering everything in the fight before they go in and are coming out a little down. Yeah, two flashes down now, both from Alfari and Han Sama. Sure, of course, Wolf used both summoners just before here, but the fact he gets a flash in exchange is big for him. Maxler, though, is trying to gank again. And they do have the TP back up from PoE. They may try to go for this play one more time. Maxlor is moving over, but it seems like there is some hesitation on if they can try to make the play happen. And meanwhile, topside SKT is going to look for the dive. Afbar Alfari looking to get himself strong right onto Bang. That's going to be the barrier immediately. Cosmic Radiance as well to negate oh, the nice damage. Look. Beautiful pull onto Bang. Hansama goes deep, and it's going to be the explosive shot to take down Bang. Big plays in the bot lane here for Misfits, and they need these big plays right now. So important, and Sama picks up the kill. Meanwhile, top lane, Alfari stayed alive because Power Beaver used the defensive TP. That was so nicely done from Han Sama, playing it so aggressive, getting the kill, getting out just barely with the heal. They will get the first turret with the CS advantage, with these kills on Han Sama. They're starting to be some hope for Misfits. It starts off as well in the bot lane, but the top lane gank did not work. SKT wastes a slight bit of time there. They knew where Peanut was, and they were able to go super hard on that bot lane gank. Seems like the communication is still on par for these guys, but it's only two and two. It's 15.3 to 14.4, anybody's game. Exactly, and they need to keep pushing the pace as they were trying to do down here. Maxlor makes the move, does nail the ultimate on the Kog'Maw. Very quick, Terracol ultimate was dropped from Wolf, which I think gives SKT some confidence Ooh. that they can fight this. But Bang, honestly, he should have been able to flash yeah, that hook. That should have been an easy flash for Bang. We saw him do it the last time we had this tower dive here where he got two kills in return. This one here, he gets pulled in, takes a lot of damage first, and then, of course, Ansama can jump in and finish him off with some fancy moves here. We saw it yesterday, or sorry, last game yeah. between these two teams. <laughs> Almost felt like yesterday by now. You know, there's a whole new day, whole it's new game. It's in the past, It's in the past right now. 0-4, Ansama. Not a good game from him, but this one here, much better start. Yeah, way better start. And, you know, as I was talking a little bit about earlier, while the Karma itself does not scale exceptionally well as far as the damage you're putting out, it does give you this super powerful support, essentially, because you have all this gold getting funneled into the Karma. You can complete your Chalice, your Art and Sensor, all these items much more early. And then you can get something like a Death Cap and have these super low cooldown, super powerful shields to allow Tristana to play aggressive. It's all, again, screaming early to mid game, because late game, it's all about Hansama's damage. And he's against a Javan and a Cho'Gath and a Terex stacking armor. It's going to take forever for him to kill anyone. So now with the early tower gone, Misfits need to make a decision here. Do they want to push up bot and take a Drake? Or do they want to go straight towards mid and top lane and go for more turrets? I actually really like this option here from Misfits. They're controlling vision on the bot side here from SKT. They're going to try to catch someone rotating over from mid lane. But right now, SKT have no reason to rotate through their own jungle because it's a it's a lane pushed all the way to tier 2 tower for Bang, so he's just going to push it out. And Vegas never going to go down. He's like, I don't care about bot lane. That's but this is my world. There's a tower break. They're more than happy giving that over to Misfits. <laughs> I mean, 
for something like that to work, Mystic really needs to commit to actually pushing towards that tier two. If Tristana wants to start towards sieging it, yeah. then you can make plays like that work. And it is risky to do so because, to your point, you know they're not going to come over unless you really push up, and then that exposes you to package roams, to TPs from Huni, yeah. and from these sorts of plays. So it is risk versus reward, but either way, Misfits need to push the pace. Yeah, exactly. And I really want to see them now push up bot lane, reset with this Tristana here, and then go towards the top side and secure another objective because there's a tower. Once they kill that tower, there's a rift hell they gotta grab as well. You need everything in the early game if you're misfits. Sadly for them, the Cloud Drake is not gonna help them too much in this game, other than actually the Blitzcrank trying to get in position to land a hook. That's where it could be useful for misfits. Got that karma speed. It's a common speed gotta as well. Go, gotta go fast. Misfits are ready to go fast this game. Like, it's basically everything they want to do. Keep the pace oh, going. Keep it in, in their favor. The map opens up. It could become SKT's. Flash, it is going to be the grab. It is going to not be the kill. He gets out just in time. And Faker stays alive. Barely surviving there, but again, not able to fight to the okay, top side. It's going to be Cooney getting hit up hard. He does have those Ninja Tommies to stop a bit of the damage. It's still going to be a 2v1 under the turret. Afari still wants it because here it's comes Max Lore. It's just Peanut on the edge. Will he make it in time? Alfari tanks up first. Ignar's there as well as he speeds around the map to help the team. But now it's about getting Max Lore out. Can they help him? Cosmic Radiance and Cataclysm down onto him. And SKT get one back, but it's traded right back. Retribution kill the coming in for Han Sama. And they're going to be able to push down this turret as well here, making plays across the map. They pull off the dive. Baker escapes. The Misfits are getting a lot of gold back. A little bit more damage onto the turret. Bang's going to have to be very careful with this positioning. As you said, Baker's still mid lane, and they're going to try to get some control there, but control of the map to Misfits. Two towers now for Misfits here. Next one is that mid lane tower. We also have to remember, Rift Hell is still there, and Igna at the moment, he's landing hooks left and right for this team. This again. And this is just a really nice dive from Misfits. They know they need to push the pace. You can't allow Huni to clear out this wave. Maxlor is on the roam up. They know Faker was pushed back to base. So Alfari tanking this up, holding the turret as long as he can before backing out. And Maxlor does get the kill there on a Huni. SKT fully coming up to the top yep. side. I will say that perhaps the could have tanked one more shot, and that might have actually allowed uh, Maxlor time to get out. But either way, really nice play. It is Alfari's birthday. You don't tank tower shots for <laughs> your birthday. He's OK stepping out there. This graph we showed in game one, we want to show it again because this is exactly how we expected this matchup to look. Right. Misfits, the red line, getting ahead early game, but then tend to struggle in the late game. Same thing in this game, especially with the composition. Exactly, and, and that's why we keep talking about pushing the pace, keep talking about extending your advantages, because what they have is not enough, and it will not carry them through to a victory in this game just yet. But the advantages they have now, when you look at this Tristana, backed up by this mid lane Karma, is going to be a lot stronger than Bang on the Kogma, who's just sitting on a wit's end right now. So you need to continually take objectives, get what you can, crack open this mid lane, and then perhaps use that to threaten the inner or set of vision for the split screen. Power of Evil not rushing out and sense in the game here, going for a team instead. Very, very powerful when he actually gets to add utility to his team. It's going to be hard to kill anyone for, from SKT's side because, again, the shielding coming in will be fairly huge. The healing as well added on top of it. And actually, with that extra amp tome, he may just be going towards uh, Luden's Echo and uh, just getting that for the early power spike here. That is a build I've seen quite a lot from Soul Lane Karma's. It does delay your Arden Sensor uh, a lot as well, but. We'll have to see what he decides to go for. But just value his own damage above what Hansama will actually bring to the table just yet. And to be fair, in the early and mid game, it's actually an incredible oh. amount of burst with this uh, mantra Q coming out from the Karma, who has a lot of levels, if you do actually grab that Luden's Echo. And we also see armor being stacked on Huni's side, so the extra AP damage from Power of Evil, of course, again, adds a bit of extra value right there, because otherwise it is all about Hansama's late game damage. Now, good damage spike here. Triforce for Faker in the mid lane. He's getting taunted back and forth as Power of Evil tries to pay, play the lane horizontally. And that adds a little bit of effect to the fight if you want to get in. You chase that mid laner down river instead of back to their turret. However, SKT just wants the bot side. It's because they're always trying to cross map you when they're behind. They know there's a chance they can make a play. Great hop by Alfari, but that's his distance. Can he gain any more? Just about to make it. Not in time. They shut him down. Right here, we had a moment where Misfits were not applying pressure either mid or top lane just yet. And SKT saw an opening to make a play on the bottom side. Afari was not ready for it. So you get surprised by the amount of members showing up. 
Meanwhile, now the Misfits are trying to get something mid. That's KT rotating back up. Teleport there for Huni. They do have to be very careful, though. There's not actually a Tristana with them. So we have Hanzama pushing on the top side, trying to knock down this turret, but we'll have to run pretty soon here. A little bit of vision, as well as the Ignar wall just kind of right in the middle to block that sentry that Ignar can be for Hansama to get out safely. And it looks like they are going to be able to drop that now. 29,000 to 26, or 27. And getting a, a tier 2 tower here. Again, great for Misfits. Allows them to push the lanes even deeper towards SKT. Easy access into the jungle. This mid lane tower will die fairly soon anyway. This is the moment we talk about. Look at the minimap. No lane is getting pressured right now by Misfits. So, SKT say, okay, we can make the play. There's a small window here, and they go straight for Alfari. And I think that's just Alfari accepting his death, because the only chance of getting value out of that flash is if you flash immediately. Right. He doesn't use it at all, so perhaps thinking there's just no way he could actually get out. And it's these situations that are hard to play against because you're not used to a team abusing that tiny little window to then suddenly go kill you in a side lane. Normally teams are sitting really far back on the map when they're this far down and there's a Blitzcrank on the other side. Avar could easily have stepped away when he knew, okay, there are three guys missing, but he's overstayed. And we do talk about playmaking and having that flash available for a Meganar can be very powerful. And Misfits going to group up. They already have this turret low. And onto Wolf. If they can take the Cosmic Radiance down before it's used, that means SKT is going to have to back off as well. Good focus. Heal down for Wolf. Four towers down here. Good timing for Misfits. There's a Drake alive they can grab, and then they can soon get ready for the setup around Baron. They don't need to kill the Baron in the early game, but they got to threaten it. So SKT move in to try and place wards, and then you hook them over the wall here from Ignar. He's been very good so far this game. He's been chain feeding his own AD carry, actually, <laughs> and it's working. And it's worth pointing out that Power of Evil just sat on the Amp Dome. He did get the Arden sensor, yep. so this is going to be He's a an team player. ultra powerful Tristana. Hansama should be able to finish up his second item here, have that shift, have this powerful mid lane karma at level 12 protecting him. And He's going to have opportunities to win this game, and it's going to come down to just how well can Hansama navigate it. Can Ignar continue finding these picks? Oh, Hansama going a little too deep for his own good. Doctor Buster shot backwards, saves him from Peanut. That's also going to be the Cataclysm out, but the flash for Hansama's safety. It's the exact same setup again. SKT, no. No one is currently pushing and threatening any turrets in either mid or top lane. So they rush to the bottom lane to find the one guy who might overextend them. They did find Hansama. He did stay alive because of the flash and the ulti from Tristana itself. But that's a flash gone now, which might make Hansama hesitate a little bit in the future fights. Bang, though, on his side, is delaying his optimal damage right now by going wits end first. I don't think he's against enough magic damage to really have to rush a wits end, but again, he is respecting what Power Weevil is doing and also what even the Blitzcrank can actually do with some of the early burst. Yeah, and I think it's just simply a case of you can afford to build full defensive when you have a massively stronger late game comp, right? When you have this Kog'Maw along with the Corky, when you have this huge front line and this Terek to actually buff them up, as long as you are not falling insanely behind, as long as you are not instantly dying in these team fights, you can begin to take over. And when you have the Tabbies as well as the Wits End, right. that can sometimes bridge the gap to the Terek ultimate coming down. Just makes Bang right now not a, a big threat that Misfits have to care about. And with Baron alive, with the fact you have Max Law, who is already sitting on quite enough armor on this Sejuani, he can actually tank the Baron. And it is a real possibility that Misfits can do it. And SKT knows this, so they have to fully invest in vision around the Baron to try and prevent Misfits getting an early big objective. Faker towards the top side, Misfits ahead. Having trouble with Barons throughout the group stage here. Now knowing the priority they need to keep on the top side of the map because of what S. Oh, we got Peanut. Peanut can be able to flag and drag out. Quick silence coming in from Ignar. And it's going to be Han Sama going forward, knowing they don't have Peanut for this fight. Fakers rotate it back around, and they could. Oh, Han Sama's like a flash right there. Mendy couldn't actually flash in and kill <laughs> Peanut. The jungler could have died straight away. Misfits, though, they're still looking towards the Baron. This is what we want to see. Constant threats around the big objective. And Peanut is so low. If he comes over here, he could get burst down. Ignar's looking for the hook, but SKT is coming in. This is going to be the back and forth. Peanut just on the outside. A quick shield coming in and a heal for Wolf. Faker's, Faker's going in. to split the crew right through the uprights, and he's going to say, walk this way. The team's going to have to meet him on the other side. The cleanse comes out. That's the shot for Ignar. Taken down before Cosmic 
Radiance, the left, the rest of the team is left wondering, and Misfits is looking at Baron. I think they're gonna call off the Baron. Maxlor is basing the Havnar in the bot lane. They know Huni came over, so they're just gonna take their win and try to pressure a tier two turret. But Misfits is pressing. They are challenging SKT. And they're using Ignaz Blitzcrank again. The first who gone to Peanut forces the jungle low. Then after the fight here, we see Faker trying to do everything he can to stop the Baron. He's trying to just force Misfits away from Nashor here, but instantly you see the reaction. It's turn, kill Faker, and when he thinks he's safe, Igna gets onto him. I love this play here first from Faker to stop the Baron from going down, and he thinks he's safe now. And then Igna makes the big oh. play. This is so nice there from Ignar, knowing he needs to be able to get that. And Faker, shake it off. Unhappy with the results. Welcome to the EULCS, baby. <laughs> That's exactly what Ignar was saying. Ignite still up for him. 0 0 5. Him in his bot lane. Full kill participation. Nice right, side step. Ignite turns this around. TV's moving in. Very, very low. Wolf looking for the dazzle, but he couldn't get Bastion onto Huni, so it's not going to stop any of the damage. SKT is being picked apart. Huni going way too far forward there. Doesn't have the team in his back pocket. Great side steps from Ignar. They're back on the Baron, but Peanut is alive. We'll see if they can actually navigate this. Ignar is going to be looking for hooks. Alive and healthy, much. More ready to oh, go. Oh, he gets pulled in by not his own choice. Peanut goes down. There's no smite fight. Misfits are going to pick up Baron unless Faker hits the shot. And that's Max Lors. No smite, no feast for SKT. Misfits are playing the game of their lives right now. Massively ahead of SKT. They are pushing down mid lane with a super powerful Tristana looking to knock down inhibitor turrets. And they're keeping the tempo going here. They're so aggressive with the way they're playing. As soon as Baron spawned, they had all the vision around it. They forced SKT to react, and they keep catching them. Consistency and confidence. From game one, they kept going forward. Game two, they keep going forward. And SKT's base has been broken. 23 minutes in, Misfits delivering the same medicine. Maxlor and Ignar, the alley-oop there, hits him with the Sejuani ult, perfectly setting up Ignar for the hook. The slam dunk comes in, taking out Baker, knocking down the inhibitor. And Misfits are looking so, so good. If we take a step back to the group stages, when SKT fell this far behind, they were able to delay Barons. They were able to delay their base, getting broken into it. They ended up going down early. They could just keep stalling with defensive vision. This game now, 24 minutes into it, Misfits already secured the Baron, already got the mid in here, and SKT are trying to force a fight, but they are not ready to fight. They do not want to fight. They want to scale. Yeah, there's no real need to go for this, and you know, that call is very, very questionable, whether it's the team telling who to engage or he thinking he can actually catch a carry and turn around a fight. They did not have the opportunities. This is not, you know, Wolf on Rakan looking for that epic team, but this is a Cho'Gath running forward and trying to knock someone up. Now, Rakan was available in the game here, but he yeah. wanted the Tarek to avoid a Thresh counter pick. Instead, they get a Blitzcrank. Control around the map for Misfits. SKT coming up on that point in the game when they're very good at turning around, very good at finding a way back in, but Misfits has closed those doors, it seems, so far. Alfari back towards the top side of the map, four towards the bottom as Baron is still on. Misfits. Critically, Bank does have his Rage Blade now, so his damage is gonna go massively up with that completion. But Han Sam is already on three items. They have no fear pushing forward, and this turret is going down incredibly fast. Only thing they have to respect is if Han Sama gets oh. caught by the initial engage. But he is on Tristana with Flash. He can jump away from the Java when he goes towards him and just stay safe in the back end. Keep hitting that damn turret. Minions are not still trying to get the damage on. Hansama takes a bit of damage, but they break the second inhibitor turret of the game and don't know if they want to go as far as that. They want pressure on Alfari first before they show a bit more in bot lane. They're just playing it out so intelligently here. The push and pull with this Gnar and Hansama super close to knocking down this turret, but he has taken some damage and trying to play respectful to the chance that SKT could engage. Let's remind everyone that game one was 25 minutes long and they were oh, safe. Baker pulled straight from the Valkyrie from his package. Ultimate coming in from Max Lord. The inhibitor is broken and Han Sama jumps forward. It is Alfari already coming in from the side of the map and it looks like they are going to have positioning on the Nexus oh. turret. Flash towards the fountain. Bang stays Alfari's alive. Going mega. very low and getting down. And it looks like Alfari in the back of the fight. He says, it's my birthday. I'm going to grab some kills. And that's going to be a pickup for Han Sama. The Nexus is going to be open, and Misfits are going to find the victory in Game 2 over SK Telecom T1. Do you believe it? 
the misfits from Challenger to the world stage, challenging SKT, get destroyed in game one. That bounce back, making it that much more impressive. Faker looks mad. He is not happy with how that game went. And really, that is the crazy thing, that game one was so one-sided. But suddenly, we get the change here from Misfits. They ban away the Galio. They get rid of the Jays. They say, you know what? We can put Kama in mid lane. Take a Blitzcrank in bot lane. That's what we want to see from Igna. We want to see these super aggressive playmaking supports, but they can keep forcing. And, and how often can you say that it was SKT that looked like they had a little bit of nerves, not flashing yeah. the hook in the bot lane, then Faker mid lane, unable to flash the Blitzcrank hook as well. Those are not the kind of mistakes you expect to come out of these players ever. And I actually want to temper how much we think changed. I feel like just that Galio in that Jace changed. Yeah. And Misfits were still going forward as they did in this game, last game, but without these results. Exactly, and even with a rough start where Bang picks up two kills on the very first tower dive, they know they need to return to the bot lane, do the exact same thing again, yeah. but they execute it the second time around. And as soon as you kill that first tower, Blitzcrank is unleashed. Yeah, he really is. And the vision control, I think, was commendable that game as well. Constantly being able to find picks through this Blitzcrank. The objective control is fantastic for Misfits, forcing around the Baron, but not overcommitting. And really, this is a game that they should be very proud of. The question now becomes, what does SKT change up in the draft? Because it's their turn yeah. to adapt, and it's their turn to show they have an answer to Absolutely. Misfits. They went for all the early game, or late game champions there. They might just ban away the Blitzcrank last time, but again, these are five players from Misfits who's never gone to Worlds before. In a quarterfinal, they get stumped in game one, and they bounce back like this in game two. Very impressive. Well, we've said enough. Let's send it over to Dash and the Analyst to get their thoughts on how Misfits took a game off the World Champs. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I, I didn't think I'd have to ask that question today, Azale. What will SKT have to adjust in the draft going into game three? But before we answer that question, we have to talk what, about what Misfits has done here in game two because most teams lose game one to SKT in 25 minutes and there's no bouncing back. And they completely reorient their strategy, come back and really strike a blow. And I just Especially in the matter that they lost is the most impressive thing because it felt so devastating to get early gamed on by SKT when they're the late game behemoths, but they doubled down on it with the Karma mid, which we hadn't seen, one true late game carry, a Blitzcrank to make all the plays, but they did it really well. I mean, the thing is, is they almost don't know that they should be afraid. We keep talking about, like, the mentality against SKT. You need to be afraid, play with the name, play it soft. Like, Han Sama, he's pretty much the embodiment of this team. He is only rocket jumping in one direction. We saw him rocket jump, like, many times into some Tarek stuns. So maybe, like, pump the brakes on that. But it's just forward all the time. He doesn't know he should be scared. The and that's what makes them strong. The resiliency that we're talking about wasn't just in... Game one, get over that. It was also after a really poor turret dive early. It was the sort of thing that may have actually crashed the momentum. They stuffed up a turret dive and then some, and yet still had strength of conviction, went back to their guns, used what they had after a little bit of a disrespectful draft. I think going for the Tarek Cogmore just with the information of the enemy AD carry was pretty greedy. And the greed was punished as it was a highlight reel for Ignar in particular on the Blitzcrank. I mean, no lie, we were pretty much all watching that dive, and I think every single one of us sat back and like, well, that's game, like, next? And that's the thing, like, we're about, I to, did see a, say that. We're about to see a possible, <laughs> like, Blitzcrank ban on a world stage. Like, I, what do you do about I that? I 100% said that after I saw a double kill go over to Kog'Maw within the first few minutes of the game, but it speaks to that mentality yeah. you talk about, Jad. For them to come back and say, no, that was the right play it's the right idea so execute. let us just execute on it better this time around and we start to see the kills come through across the map yeah i think after game one and then after the first failed dive nine teams out of ten tilt and lose to skt but misfits is that unique team this play as well it felt like the initial dive wouldn't work because of the terra call but ignar consistently found the hook han sama understood his damage he was willing to dive in and they kept chaining their cc with the nameplates off, so to speak. They're going for Faker. They're willing to try and make the dives on SKT, and they're getting it done. SKT thought that if they adjusted their itemization, no Relic Shield, just the Doran Shield start, going for Wits End for a bit more power, they could get away with the Cogmore. But unfortunately, the lane itself was turret taken. The Blitzcrank was unleashed on the map. Peanut was always on the back foot. And the end result was, there was so much space for Ignar to roll in. His accuracy was true, and 
SKT, it was one by one by one, basically on the cooldown of a Blitzcrank hook. And again, it's exactly what we wanted from them. Ignore on a Playmaker, breaking the bot lane, snowballing from there. The fact that they kept down, like, everyone's going to look at the, the Blitzcrank as the important factor here, but it's also the Tristana, because Tristana is able to shove and take those towers so early, and that was the important thing, breaking the structure, opening it up so Blitzcrank can be that menace on the map, and then continuing to snowball your gold lead by running through all the other towers. And Jav, these are the, the gold differentials that kind of more mirror the group stage performances mm -hmm. of both of these teams now quite not as impressive as the SKT 9K in 20 minutes as before, but it was enough to get the job done and the way that Misfits played with their gold lead was yeah. quite impressive. And that was a 10K gold lead five minutes later. They continued to layer it on and we can talk about the Blitzcrank being effective and the Triss being effective, but the Karma mid rounds us together and the difference between game one and game two as far as Faker's presence was night and day. Galio was unlocked to make plays. This game, Faker was not making plays and he... He did look angry because he was getting picked off time and time again and couldn't stay alive. And you know, we had this kind of meme in Korea where we talk about the two junglers, Peanut and Blank. You have to beat Peanut to earn the right to face Blank. We haven't heard the confirmation yet, but seeing Blank this is game, coming in. Seeing this game. Boom, right on time. I, I knew it before then, guys, because seeing this game, the mechanics from Peanut in game one weren't wonderful. Game two, he was also missing his skill shots. They've earned the right to face blind. They've earned the right to piss off Faker. I'm not going to mince my words. He looked pissed off. He's looked pissed off before and comes back from there. I said that word a lot. But regardless, <laughs> they've earned the right to actually put the fire under SKT, and that makes game three exciting. And we talk about the importance of the picks, but we also have to talk about the importance of the players on the picks. And in particular for this game, Ignar on the Blitzcrank was going off. Hook after hook being landed, and it bought them the victory. This replay brought to you by Acer Predator. And then it's a question of where do you go from here? Are we going to see a Blitzcrank ban? Will SKT try to just prioritize a winning 2v2 bot lane? So if they try to play a Playmaker again, that they feel more comfortable going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, and this Blitzcrank was a huge influence on this game. The early game presence of your lanes is also the big swinger in this series. So the arms race of early game is probably what we're gonna end up seeing because you know that Misfits has earned the right to play blank. But also, a Western team beating a Korean team, let alone SKT in a best of five, is unprecedented. So I think this is the direction the series is going from here. Misfits got the one way winning the game. I think they continue going in that direction. All right, well, I can confirm once again that Blank will be subbing in for SKT. They've also elected to go back to blue side. So if we think back to game one, the importance of the Sejuani and the Galio going over to SKT, what kind of adjustments are we expecting to see out of both of these teams now that SKT's just taking a punch to the face? I know I talked about the bans from Misfits on red side in game one. I think finding a way to force SKT off a safe wave clearing bot laner this game, they felt empowered. We can go Cogmore, we'll be fine. It wasn't fine. So something like a Caitlyn in the first one may even be a ban to actually shore up the early game because the early game arms race is happening in this series. And it's been so influential that, you know, one team bans Lulu. Usually it's Misfits that starts that and then they force the Janna ban out of SKT. It's also trying to keep those defensive supports that absorb a lot of this pressure off the playing field. So hmm. hopefully they're able to stay strong there. Teams need to stop showing their dual lane early yep. because the counter pick down there is incredibly pivotal. That's where these games are being played. And the team with the push that can capitalize around that bottom lane is the one that's winning. All right. Well, hey, not that all of a sudden we need to throw the predictions out the window, but Misfits is showing a lot of fight here. Is this starting to make you a little concerned about the prediction here for SKT, or will they show the composer that they're famous for in bringing it back in the series? If SKT struggle in this next game, that's when you can start jumping aboard the uh, Misfits hype train. But otherwise, it's still presence in SKT. You know they're going to be that dominant force. It's gone blue side so far. It's going to go back onto blue side. I agree with you. The manner of the victory here, if SKT does come, if they lose, we're getting into crazy territory, but mm -hmm. really need to show us here to also get the players to calm down because even looking at the, the face cams, it wasn't great. Yeah, to save my own tail a little bit, I said it was possible but not probable <laughs> that Misfits would win a game. This was that possibility. They get the early game draft, they jump out to a whole huge lead, and they close it before SKT can hit the major power spikes and get control of the game. But if they can get into that 20-minute area with a large enough goal lead to play around Baron, Misfits just proved that's enough to win.
which a lot of people coming into this series would not have been willing to agree on that point. So Misfits is absolutely dangerous for SKT, and it's the big reason we're seeing them sub here. Exactly. Blank getting set up on stage just now. Let's talk about why they sub him in at times, right? We talk about the downloading of the opposing jungler, and if the early game is that important, tracking Max Lore that important, Blank's now had two games of evidence here that he's got in his arsenal to come in and see what he can work with. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big believer that support, sorry, jungle sub is the way to go because you get that information, because pathing can be varied. I think Max Lore is very creative in his pathing, so it's not necessarily one style, but having that information, knowing where the wards largely are, knowing the paths, I think is a big advantage. And Maxwell kind of has to reset in the same way we said about Misfits in game two, because there is going to be that information to blank. All right, well, Misfits have shown they're not going down without a fight. So join us here after the break for game three of this explosive series. Don't touch that browser. Gonna be Maxler going very low. He takes the tank first. First blood going over to Bang. He's still alive, but goes down to the explosive shot. Tong back, 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 back. Tong is moving bot lane. I go, I go, I go. Okay, you get him and get up. Fine, fine. Tong is moving bot lane. Nice. Tong is moving bot lane. I've jumped, I've jumped. Good shit. Now it's about getting Maxlor out. Can they help him? Cosmic Radiance and Cataclysm down onto him. And SKT get one back, but it's traded right back. Retribution kill. Make the score to split the crew right through the uprights, and he's going to say, walk this way. The team's going to have to meet him on the other side. The cleanse comes out. Oh, the Ignore, taken down before Cosmic Radiance. Jungle Flash. Down, 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 down. Nice, 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 nice. Bang stays alive. Right, going mega. Going very low and getting down. And it looks like Afari in the back of the fight. He says, it's my birthday. I'm going to grab some kills. And that's going to be a pickup for Han Sama. The Nexus is going to be open. And Misfits are going to find the victory in game two over SK Telecom T1. If you want to follow the best of the Rift, then you need T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. We've doubled our coverage, so you can stream worlds in more places than ever before. With T-Mobile, don't miss a moment from the first battle, all the way to the lifting of the Summoner's Cup. Another reason why T-Mobile is America's best unlimited network.